The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Bucky D'Agostino said of this video clip, quote, blues, albies, and Spanish mackerel were all together. And that's what you want to see. The water boiling with fish, several species of fish, all within eyesight of the Jersey Shore beaches. I'm Jim Hutchinson, and this is your September 14th, 2023 video fishing forecast for the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. And that's the real dumping, drag burning, rod pumping excitement that attracts so many people to the inshore mid-range grounds this time of year in the hunt for speedsters. Bones, yes. Spanish, yes. But especially those false albacore. Now, when those tunny or fat alberts or falsies or albies, whatever you want to call them, when they're blitzing on the beach, uh, thin metals, epoxy or e exo jigs at a rapid clip, that'll do the trick. Highly recommended that you go with the fluoro because these critters, these, uh, these summer pelagics of ours, they have really great eyesight. But I slipped out uh, late last week with Captain Dave DeGennaro aboard his high flyer sport fishing uh, out of Waretown. We trolled Clark Spoons around the Barnegat Ridge, about 20 miles east of where I am right now at Island Beach State Park, uh, looking for the fish. Um, we ended up, that, that's one of the best things to do. If you don't see them blitzing and you know they're around the Barnegat Ridge, use those Clark, Clark Spoons, put them out on a drill and you troll until you find the fish and then you could stop and set up. But what we did is on a deep edge, right up onto the ridge, throwing fresh spearing and fresh dead peanuts over, drifting some baits in the spread, again with that fluoro, caught a few before heading for the barn because we saw in a serious weather app on the screen there that it looked like a nice dose of weather was coming in. If you're gonna be heading off to the mid range, offshore, even inshore grounds, that serious weather uh, that you sign up for is fantastic for tracking storms coming from Philly and moving across the state. Of course, we do have some serious weather to contend with off the Atlantic coast this week, and it doesn't look very hospitable for uh, much of the rest of this week into the weekend into Sunday, of course, as well. Inshore, there's a small craft advisory in effect through Thursday night. Midweek NOAA weather is calling for heavy winds and big seas uh, through Saturday at the very least. Now, the offshore forecast, on the other hand, carries along through Sunday from the Hudson to Baltimore. So I doubt we'll be getting much in terms of offshore fishing reports uh, for the weekend for Tom P's column that comes out every Monday at thefisherman.com. The culprit, of course, is Hurricane Lee, which at this point, cross your fingers, should pass well offshore of the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region as of Saturday. But clearly, you know, as this video comes out on Thursday, you need to keep monitoring this storm. Uh, these tropical systems seem to have a mind of their own. They can zigzag east-west, stop on a dime, and change their direction. But hopefully Lee shimmies and wobbles himself or herself. I don't know if Hurricane Lee is a uh, boy or girl. It moves east. The better, the quicker, and the more safely uh, and quietly as possible. Now, due to the passing glance and the huge swells expected on our beaches this weekend, the folks at the Jer New Jersey Beach Buggy Association have pushed their annual youth tournament here at Island Beach State Park from this Saturday until the final Saturday in September. That would be the 30th. If you want more information on that, you can go to njbba.org, the keepers of the beach and the protectors of all things good here at Island Beach State Park. I'll have more about why I'm set up here in just a couple of minutes. But speaking of tournaments, New Jersey's fluke season, of course, ends September 27th. So yeah, there's still time to score, even if tournament fluke season is done for 2023. Now this week's open boat features a look at the third annual Rock the Dock Fluke Tournament hosted by the New Jersey Fishing Club as the Fisherman Magazine's Jenny Ackerman hopped aboard the Mary M4 in the morning before hitting the scales in Manahawkin. And she provides us with a look at some of the upcoming events still being held here at the Jersey Shore. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this week's Open Boat. Today we're heading down the LBI to cover the third annual Rock the Dock Fluke Tournament. So come on in, let's go, and let's go catch some flukes.
Hey guys, uh, Matt from the NJ Fishing Club. We run the Rock the Dock tournament here in LBI. Great tournament for hardcore fishermen, for uh, just the anglers that are going out to have a good time, family friendly, uh, loads of prizes in Calcutta's in this one. And I think that's why it makes such a great tournament. Thank you, Matt, for that awesome Rock the Dock recap. Unfortunately, fluke season ends September 27th, but you can catch us rocking the dock next year at that tournament. However, if you're interested in more tournaments, since tournaments are an excellent opportunity to get out fishing, you know, win some extra dough to buy some more tackle, check out the September edition of the Fisherman Magazine, the calendar of events, because we have a lot of tournaments coming up. To name a few, we have the Riptide Fall Striped Bass Derby, the 60th annual HW Shader Tournament, the 5th Annual American Angler Surf Fishing Tournament and the 76th Annual Long Beach Island Fishing Club Tournament. Now, however, if you still have fluke on the mind, come up to the Long Island Fisherman Magazine Show. We have the Fisherman Show and seminars where I will be hosting a seminar talking about pitching up current for fluke, a game-changing fluke strategy. And if you come to my seminar, you can get yourself a nice fluke sandwich sticker designed by yours truly. By the way, like Jenny said, I'll also be in Huntington out on Long Island next Thursday, the 21st, uh, working the event. Also, I have a seminar on a November to Remember talking about last season's epic, epic, epic striper bite here at the Jersey Shore and talking a little bit about how to maximize your way through all those blitzes of peanuts and P uh, 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 what does he call them? Cupcakes. Nick Konoszewski calls those mid-range, the cupcake bunker. But from, from uh, Montauk all the way down to the central Jersey Shore, acres of bunker, that usually leads to a fantastic striper event along our beaches. And I would remind you that this year there are a lot of bunker according to asmfc we are at a 65 year high on bunker populations so that only stands to reason why i'm so hopeful for this upcoming season now i'm looking forward to that event next thursday but also next friday saturday and sunday is the jersey shore boat sale and expo you belong on the water. Adventure begins at the Jersey Shore Boat Sail and Expo, September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th at the Shore Town Ballpark in Lakewood, home of the Jersey Shore Blue Claws. For tickets and more, visit jerseyboatexpo.com. Now, if things as forecast are a little rough on those inshore, nearshore waters this weekend, of course, as anticipated, you may want to nose around out back for options. Now, a friend of mine, my neighbor, he and his wife were out earlier this week Northern Barnegat Bay doing a couple of drifts, 80 degree water temperatures on the outgoing tide. They had a couple of dozen fluke, a couple of dozen throwback fluke and one keeper. So there was plenty of action there. And with the amount of bait stacking up in the back bays, particularly with this storm, I'm not sure what they're gonna do, but I would anticipate more species of fish being back there piling on those peanuts. Blowfish, of course, is another option. Uh, have gotten some good reports. Barnegat Bay, Little Egg, even Great Bay, uh, down into some of those quieter um, areas behind Cape May County, find yourself a quiet hole uh, off uh, by yourself, uh, a channel or uh, you know one of those uh, potholes that you've got out there. 
couple of uh, frozen chum logs because you want to chum heavily and then bait with the smaller hooks with the fish bites, the bloods, or the pieces of clam. These tasty puffers are still in the back. Uh, certainly a great way of enjoying some action with the kids. Uh, as a subscriber of the Fisherman Magazine, I would remind you too that while you're on one of these chum trips in the back, you're going to catch a lot of different species of fish and inevitably you're going to hook up with a sea robin as well. Well, that is one of the contending fish in the Fisherman Magazine's Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. So yeah, you could win a prize for a jumbo seabird if you would like. Let's turn it over to my friend Tim Smith for our weekly look at the Dream Boat Leaderboard. No new entries this week in the Dream Boat Contest, so our top three remain unchanged. Bobby Cifarelli still holds first place with 24 points. Eddie Terrabile remains in second place with 18 points. And Kyle Krause maintains his third place position with 16 points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new 21 foot Steigercraft center console powered by a Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. And of course, we still have Sheep's Head in play, predominantly from Barnegat Inlet, the South Jetty, all the way down into Cape May County, across uh, into Lewis, Delaware, and probably Indian River Rocks as well. John Creeley found a finicky bite over the weekend, lost a couple of bigger ones before depositing this into the cockpit of his yak. He's using a three ounce copperhead bottom sweeper and his custom 7.6 Century Weapon Junior. He said, nothing else to say, really, John. I, I would say to John, if there's nothing else to say, tell me where you were fishing. Well, you got to find that out on your own. Again, as I said last week, um, beach fishing is going to be a little bit tougher for us this weekend. I mean, last week we finally opened it up after Labor Day weekend. It's all hours again, and now this week we're contending with some swells. And I also just got word from the Association of Surf Angling Clubs, ASAC, that due to the forecasted conditions for this weekend, this Saturday's American Angler Classic is going to be rescheduled for some time in October, which is when, obviously, the striper bite here at the Jersey Shore starts to get into full swing. Another storm on the, on the horizon, in addition to Lee, this one's arriving from the, from the east as the foul wind from the government-owned company from Denmark, Orsted, has finally arrived. I've got some news from Ocean City and here at Island Beach State Park, but first let's see what the conditions are like out west in the Poconos with my man, George Shower, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, thanks, Jim. You know, here we are only a couple days away from the official start of our fall season. And I'll tell you what, if you work your way through a couple of these thunderstorms that have been rumbling up the East Coast, you might be in for a little bit of good fishing. I checked in with a couple of the local guys to get my a taste for the water and things that are going on. Lehigh River guide, uh, Steve Kolnick, uh, he said the fire bite has been on fire. He's been getting uh, clients out on smallmouth and even a couple of those brown trout. So uh, these rains are only adding a little bit of positive flow and cooling down that water some, so fishing should be good on the Lehigh River. Now, same thing over in the Delaware River. I checked in with Tim Kebo over at Finseeker. He kind of said the same thing. He's getting guys out in some really chunky smallmouth uh, and even a few walleye in the mix, too, to, to, to spice things up. So good fishing on the Delaware. Hopefully these rings don't uh, mess things up too much and, and get that flow running a little bit too high. Over on the lakes, uh, this rain can be a little bit beneficial. Again, pulling some of those temperatures down. I checked in with a river with a lake guide, Josh Taylor over at uh, Fish Fever. Uh, he said the same thing. He's actually getting into some great smallmouth fishing. Uh, he's even prospecting for a few of those walleye to get clients out on this fall season. Also, I got a check in from local angler Chris Matchison. 
Uh, he's been out in Chester County fishing some of that cooler water in the creeks there, and he's saying he's getting in some great brown trout as well, and all the smallmouth you could possibly catch. So fishing looks good pretty much all over the place, guys. And if I had to bet this weekend, I think I'd be heading out for some smallmouth myself. So I hope the water doesn't mess things up too much with the rains coming our way. We'll keep an eye on Hurricane Lee. Uh, but from Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. So on Tuesday this week, September 12th, construction crews began cutting up the streets of Ocean City, New Jersey to be begin their cabling work for Orsted's Ocean Wind One site. I know the recent headlines from Orsted say that they're going to be delayed until 2026. I think that's a lot of smoke and mirrors because they're already tearing up the streets of Ocean City. Clearly, industrial offshore wind work is now underway. Now, in this exclusive video taken by Tom Lee, Six protesters are seen getting arrested on Tuesday following the nonviolent protest. The principles, of course, uh, that we, we got from the late great Martin Luther King Jr. The Ocean City residents were charged with failure to disperse and obstruction of public pathways. Now, according to Channel 6 Action News out of Philly, Orsted began offshore testing work Tuesday to investigate the proposed route for its power cable that will connect the offshore wind turbines and the substations to the electrical grid at Beasley's Point. Now that work involved cutting holes into roadways, checking on the location of existing utilities and doing soil and groundwater sampling. Ocean City to Beasley's Point is just one of the onshore power uh, egresses or ingresses that are coming from industrial offshore wind. That's where one of these giant pipes is going to come. Another one, of course, will be here at Island Beach State Park, not far from the swimming area. I'm right in between the swimming area A and B, right in the middle. I'm right where you air up for Island Beach State Park. You can see some construction work going on behind me. Uh, so I'm at the, the most southern end down here where you air up. Now there's quite a bit of heavy machinery here, uh, a lot of construction equipment uh, on the way in. Uh, a, a parade of construction vehicles went out past me. Some of the work that's been done up here at Island Beach, to the best of my knowledge, has been some sewer work and I guess maybe some general maintenance. Um, but what a lot of folks are wondering, and I'm getting some tips about this, is is that a precursor to what's going to go on for the Orsted cabling project here at Island Beach State Park? which of course cables will run through Island Beach and ultimately across the Barnegat Bay Estuary and make it to Fork and River, Lacey Township, I guess that is right over there. The Fork and River, the uh, Oyster Creek, uh, former Oyster Creek nuclear power generating station. Now, if you saw my Instagram post earlier this week, I was here at the park. You know that as of Monday afternoon, I had reached out to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, uh, to the press office, they make me go through the press office, mother may I, I have to go through there and I asked the question Monday, is this work being done for the cabling for industrial offshore wind and how is it going to impact this fall access for surf casters uh, here at Island Beach. Now, as a journalist who covers fisheries issues, the DEP press office, uh, well, they don't exactly take my queries for transparency very seriously. Former Star Ledger uh, editorial correspondent, Karen Shinsky is now the senior press officer at the DEP. And I was taught as a young man to say Miss, Mr., Mrs. So apparently, uh, Ms. Shinsky, uh, I called her Ms. Shinsky in an email. She didn't like that. Uh, she doesn't like uh, my formality. Spank me on the hiney for that. I'm not exactly sure what schlocky means, but I'll look that up later. Suffice to say, as of this time that I'm recording this week's video fishing forecast, I have not heard back on my query, which isn't the first time I've had to wait days, even months, uh, even never to get information from the DEP press office. Folks often wonder why I'm so critical of state and federal government. Uh, well, the lack of transparency in Trenton, it's simply mind boggling. And this is not my first rodeo uh, with Ms. Shinsky. Uh, I will tell you that slow walking, jive talking her way through this stuff, spending more time criticizing me as a reporter rather than uh, answering my questions. Uh, as she said, uh, it's at our convenience. It's at a staffer's convenience. My editor's log from May 16th, 2022 called Mother May I. 
sheds more light on that subject. That's when Ms. Shinsky spent so much time debating me on the First Amendment process that the DEP didn't even announce the new fluke regulations for 2022 until after the season started. You can insert the Benny Hill theme right here. So as soon as Ms. Shinsky decides that I'm worthy of an answer from the DEP as to what's going on behind me and how it's going to impact surfcasters when it comes through, I will let you know. Next Thursday, September 21st, join me and our entire editorial team, Dave Anderson, Matt Broderick, Jenny Ackerman, out on Long Island for the Fisherman Magazine's annual inshore, offshore, and surf extravaganza. First seminar of the night, I believe is Dave Anderson at 615, but the lines through the door will be forming my guess is around 3 p.m. because there are, there are a number of really cool things inside the goodie bag and there are hundreds of people that will be waiting in line to get through. Then that very same weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, your crew at the Fisherman Magazine, we're gonna be out in Lakewood, Jersey Shore Blue Claw Stadium for the Jersey Shore Boat Sale and Expo. That's next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'll be doing my video fishing forecast from there next week, for, so look for that. My thanks this week to the Wujek boys for sending along our most colorful digital weekly edition cover this week and that quote unquote Benito Bonanza from the beach. Those speedsters are in there, of course, in the mix with the Spanish mackerel and the Albies, who knows what else. In short, perhaps Jetty Mahi. As this storm presses through, who knows? We could be seeing some Jetty Mahi at some point in the next week. That cover, I will remind you, never forget, Never forget, it's, it meant something to me 22 years ago, it meant something to us all 22 years ago. It should mean something to us again 22 years later. This week, the anniversary of 9-11. Uh, my thoughts, my prayers are with all of you who have lost family, friends through that tragic event. Uh, I, I'm with you, man. Uh, what a, this is a tough week for all of us. Keep an eye on the weather. Let's hope Lee goes east, turns right, and just keeps screaming across. Hell, maybe it'll hit Denmark. I don't know. But We'll see you again next week with next week's report. Again, that'll be in Lakewood, Jersey Shore, Blue Claws Stadium, right here, the Fisherman Magazine and thefisherman.com.